fabulous fourth graders. Hello. Thank you for tuning in to another online math class. Our learning target today is that we can multiply a fraction by a whole number. So exciting stuff. We are moving on to multiplication, multiplying a fraction by a whole number. I want to remind us of a couple of important concepts before we get to the meat and potatoes of multiplying a fraction by a whole number. The first thing I wanted to remind us is that multiplication is repeated addition. For example, with regular multiplication not involving fractions, five times two means you have five groups of two. Okay, that could look like this. Two, one, two, three, four. We have five groups of two. Another way to think about that is two plus two plus two plus two plus two. Two, three, four, five. We have two five times. Okay. When we think about this with fractions, we learned it the same way. For example, I might tell you all that I have one fifth plus one fifth plus one fifth. We said that we could write that as three times one fifth. Well, when we did our repeated addition of unit fractions that have a numerator of a one, we know that that would be one, two, three, and the denominator stays the same. If we were to think of it as three times one fifth, I have one fifth and one fifth and one fifth. Right? I have three times one fifth, meaning I have one fifth three times. What would that be? Well, how many fifths do we have? We have three fifths. Because okay. if you have one fifth three times, you have three fifths. A little trick you could kind of think of as a rule, it's we always take the whole number times the numerator. Our parts would never change. Like we're going to continue to be working with fifths. It doesn't matter if you're using repeat addition or multiplication. Our parts, so our denominator is fifths. That never changes. We just know that we have the whole number times the numerator. We have one fifth three times. That is one, two, three fifths. I could look at a bunch more examples with you. Let's see. Let's say we have this model. These are sixths in case they're hard for you to see. One sixth, two sixths, three sixths, four sixths, five sixths. I have five sixths of a pie. I could write that as repeated addition. One sixth plus one sixth plus one sixth plus one sixth plus one sixth, and then write down that that equals one six, two six, three six, four six, five six. We could also write this as I have one sixth, how many times? One, two, three, four, five. When I use my rule, whole number times the numerator, the top of the fraction, five times one is five, denominator stays the same. My model supports that. I have five sixths. Another example, this time we're going to work with not a unit fraction. Okay, for example, I'm going to draw my model this time. These models look different in different ways. So here's my pizza and it's cut into fourths. And I have two of those. Now I have three of those. Now I'm going to shade them in. I ate this whole pizza. So I ate one fourth and another fourth 
and another fourth, and another fourth of that pizza, which we know is the whole thing, right? I'm gonna eat this whole pizza as well. That is plus another fourth, plus another fourth. Oh my goodness, plus another fourth, plus another fourth. Oh man, I'm still hungry. Wait, so we know that's four fourths, just one whole. Now I'm gonna eat three out of four of this other one. One fourth, plus one fourth, plus one fourth. Holy man, okay. We could then represent all of this repeated addition by writing it as a multiplication problem. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Let's see if that's right. Four, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yep. I have 11 times 1 fourth, 11 times 1 is 11, and they're all cut into fourths. If I count up here to check, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 11 fourths. Lots of you that were doing models when we were first learning about unit fractions, we were doing this. We were writing unit fractions as a uh, product of a whole number and a unit fraction, so that's not super new. I mentioned going to something that's not a unit fraction. We didn't quite get there, sorry. Here it comes now. <laughs> they might say to you, all right, please do something like this. Six times two thirds. What that might look like is here's my fraction bars and you don't have to draw them. This will just help you to understand what it's saying. I have two thirds two times. And I need to keep going till six, right? Because there's one, two, three, four, because I have two thirds six whole times. So that's four times. This will be five times. And now this is six times. I have drawn two thirds six times. Now if I follow our rule, whole number times our numerator is 12 thirds. I can check and see, do I have 12 individual thirds here? One third, two thirds, three thirds, four thirds, five thirds, six thirds, seven thirds, eight thirds, nine thirds, 10 thirds, 11 thirds, 12 thirds. I did that correctly. This model is used to explain your thinking. Okay, a lot of times they will not ask you to draw it. You can just do your multiplication and remember each whole is made up of whatever the denominator is. So denominator stays the same. Downstairs number stays the same. Another one without a model this time. Seven times five six. All right, that means I have five six. If I were to draw that, five out of six pieces of a candy bar, seven whole times. Well, seven times five, hopefully, you said 35. Denominator stays the same. If I drew that all out, if I drew five six, which looks like this. One, two, three, four, five. It's five sixths. If I were to draw out five sixths seven different times, I would end up with 35 of these individual pieces. And they would still be split into six, so our denominator would stay the same. One more thing that they might ask you to do on some work soon might give you a number like three fifths and they might say to you, okay, please write that as a whole number times a unit fraction. I remember that that means times. So we could look at this and think, well, if I'm working with one fifth and they say that I have three fifths, okay, they wanna know how many fifths is that made up of? Well, there's one fifth, a second fifth, a third fifth. Three fifths means that as repeated addition. So I know that that means I have one third 
I'm sorry, I have one fifth three times. If you don't wanna draw this out, the rule is we look at the numerator. The numerator would tell us what we're multiplying by. And this is kind of going the opposite direction. They're giving you the answer. They're saying you write the multiplication problem that would make sense. If you have questions, please be sure to email me. Thank you for being good listeners. Remember, you can also play this video as many times as you need to for help. Okay. Thank you for working so hard. I miss you all lots. I hope you're having a great day. Look forward to seeing you soon.